Hello everyone, my next topic is on gestational trophoblastic disease that is hyatiform mole. Now, gestational trophoblastic disease can progress to a gestational neoplasia like invasive mole, choriocarcinoma and placental site trophoblastic tumor. Hyatiform mole is basically an abnormal condition of placenta with partly degenerative and partly proliferative changes in the chronic villi. Hmm. It's a benign condition with malignant potential. Clinical features that are seen is history of short period of amenorrhea. The most common presentation is vaginal bleeding that is also referred to as white current in the red current juice. Lower abdominal pain may or may not be present. Vomiting of pregnancy is excessive that is also known as hyperemesis gravidarum that is due to the increase in HCG. There are thyroxic features that is due to chorionic thyrotropin. Grape like vesicles are seen per vagina, right? and breathlessness may be seen because of the pulmonary embolization of the uh, that will I right now signs which are seen uh, the patient looks ill right quite toxic pallor is present significant features of pre are present abdominal palpation size of uterus is usually more than the period of amenorrhea uterus feels firm elastic and dewy Fetal parts are usually not seen, fetal heart sounds are usually absent, like it, it depends if it is a complete mole or partial mole. In complete mole, the fetal heart parts are completely absent. In partial mole, they are slightly present. Okay. And there is also hydropic degeneration of villi that is usually present. Investigation of choice is the USG, that is ultrasonography. Typical appearance is snowstorm appearance that is seen. SCG titer estimation is very important. There is increased SCG titer in urine diluted up to 1 in 200 to 1 in 500 that usually exists beyond 100, that usually persists beyond 100 days of gestation. Right. The definitive management is suction evacuation. Now, besides that, supportive management has to be done like blood for blood transfusion, ring electric solution, IV fluid, etc. There are basically two categories of patients group A, group B. Group A for active, that means the mole is in the process of expulsion. That means the cervix is favorable in that case. And the group B patients that are usually inert uterus, that means the cervix is tubular and closed. Now group A patients, the cervix is favorable, so in that the different management is suction evacuation. Group B, it is inert patients, that means cervix is tubular and closed. So first we need to do the slow dilatation by laminated tents or Alternatively, medical dilatation by prostaglandin E1, that is mysoprostol, vaginally. And then that is followed by suction evacuation, right? And follow-up has to be done for at least one year, that is quite mandatory. Weekly it is done until the HG levels reach the normalized levels, baseline, it becomes negative. And then it is done monthly for about six months, right? Prophylactic chemotherapy is uh, usually not so much preferred only indicated in few cases when SCG fails to become normal or even after becoming normal it is rising or there is evidence of metastasis post evacuation hemorrhage no follow-up facilities available etc and the patient that's very important the patient is advised not to become pregnant for at least one year okay and for the prophylactic chemotherapy the, the, the preferred is methotrexate 1 mg per kg body weight on days 1, 3, 5 and 7 and with folinic acid on days uh, point with 0.1 mg per kg body weight on days 2, 4, 6 and 8. Repeated after every 7 days about 3 courses are given and one important thing is the contraceptive advice which is given is barrier methods right injection DMPA and uh, NGIOs can also be given right so this is the important thing. Thank you.